Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today about reconnecting a three-phase supply from a Y connection into a delta connection and we'll see what happens when we do that. So, first thing I want to point out is over here we have our simple three-phase generator. What I have is these three coils connected 120 degrees mechanically apart, which generates a phase voltage that is 120 electrical degrees apart as well. Now, one of the major points we need to observe with this is regardless of how these coils get connected, we are always going to generate the same phase voltage. For example, with this one, let's say that we are going to generate 120 volts phase voltage. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at a couple different connections. First of all, let's connect this up. If you notice, we have our three phases. I've represented them right here in these bars. We have our A phase, our B phase, and our C phase. So first thing we're going to do is take one end of these and connect them up to one common point. Okay, this makes our Y connection. And if we look at it like this, There's our A, our B, and our C. And in the middle we have what's known as our XO point or our star point or our neutral point. This point would be our neutral. Okay, so a couple numbers we want to observe before we take this and reconnect it into delta. First of all, if we said that we have 120 volts phase voltage. We can take that right here and say 120 volts, 120 volts, 120 volts. E phase equals 120 volts. Now, one of the byproducts of a Y connected system is that we also get the dual voltage. We get the 120 volt phase voltage. And if I were to take a voltmeter and measure line to line, my line voltage would actually be root three greater. It would be my phase voltage times root 3, or in this case, 120 volts times root 3, my line voltage would be 208 volts. Okay, so that's our Y connected system right now. Let's say, for example, these lines were drawing 10 amps, just to keep the numbers simple. Okay, now if we look at the way these are connected, we'll focus on phase B here. If I have 10 amps leaving this coil right here out to whatever my circuit is, we can look at my phase current is going to be the same as my line current. And that's one thing we can say for sure about a Y connected system is that I phase equals I line. Okay, in this case, I phase equals 10 amps, which would also be equal to our line current as well. So these are the numbers that we're going to observe with our Y connected circuit. We're going to see what happens when we switch this around and connect it in delta. So let's erase what we've got here. And we'll see what happens. So I'm going to leave our numbers up here so that when we do our calculations with our delta, we can compare the two and see what's really changed. All right, so hopefully that's all erased enough that we can see. I'm also going to remove our connection to our three coils here because we're going to change the way we wire this up. All right, so Instead of connecting one common end, we're going to do this this time. We're going to take our one end here, connect it here. We're going to take this, connect it here. We'll bring this one all the way back around and connect it in there. And what we've actually created here now is something that looks like this.
and we can still see we have A, A, B, B, C, C. We've taken our three coils in our generator or our supply and we've reconnect them, reconnected them in a delta configuration. Okay, so as mentioned before, one of the things we need to remember is that we are still generating the exact same amount of phase voltage that we were before. We still have 120 volts of phase voltage. Okay, and because my voltage hasn't changed, Ohm's law tells me that I'm still going to see 10 amps, if that's what if my load is drawing is 10 amps, I would still see 10 amps in my phase. Same voltage, same impedance, same current. Okay, now here's where the difference comes in. If I look at these two lines and I go over here and I say, okay, well, let's figure out. We just said that phase voltage was still equal to 120 volts. Now, if I take a voltmeter, we'll pretend this is my voltmeter, and I measure across my phase, there's my 120 volts. But realistically, I'm measuring line A to line B, which previously was my 208 volts. But in a delta system, we know that phase voltage is equal to line voltage, and we can see that right there. There's my line, there's my phase. Same thing, no change. So we can say that E line is also equal to 120 volts. So the first thing you'll notice is that our phase voltage is now root, or sorry, our line voltage, I should say, is now root three smaller than it was when it was connected in a Y system. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna take a look at is current. I have 10 amps on my A phase, okay? And we know that line current in a delta is made up of, for example, A to B plus A to C, not just the 10 amps of phase current anymore. So we have, I of the phase is equal to 10 amps, but now I line is in a balanced system, I phase times root three, or in this case, 10 amps times root three, which means we now have 17.32 amps of line current. So again, in a delta, or sorry, in a Y connected system, we have root three larger voltage line to line. In a delta connected system, my phase voltage is equal to my line voltage. In my Y connected system, I phase is equal to I line. In my delta connected system, I phase is root three smaller than I line, or you could say I line is root three greater than I phase. So we essentially we increase the amount of current output on this system just by reconnecting it in a delta configuration. Hopefully this helps and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.